David, always good to talk to you, especially when there's great news. Well, it's a pleasure. We're just finishing the the largest uh, annual meeting in the history of the National Rifle Association. Our 141st annual meeting here in St. Louis uh, ended and 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 drew uh, 73,740 people. We were here in St. Louis five years ago, ago and drew roughly 69,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the annual meeting has grown, but this annual meeting was so important, Jenny because we are facing the battle of our lives as we go into this election season. Uh, As you know, we've developed uh, within the NRA and for our membership, the theme for what we're doing is all in. We're all in because we know just how important the results this fall are going to be in terms of the future of the Second Amendment. But coming out of this annual meeting, what I can tell you is that every member of the NRA, every attendee, every contributor, Every friend of the NRA understands it, and they're all in, because we're going to do everything we can this year to make certain that the death knell of the Second Amendment does not come in November with the re-election of the Obama administration. And, David, you know, I couldn't agree with you more, because I've been to a lot of NRA meetings, and they're all wonderful. But you could really tell from the families, the supporters, the people who were there, there was a sense of urgency and a sense of energy like I've never seen before. That's right. They know what the mission is. And everybody associated with the NRA, every member, everybody that supports us knows what they have to do. They're prepared to get out there between now and November to find unregistered gun owners, to find friends who support the Second Amendment, to get them registered and get them out to vote. It's not enough uh, for a member of the NRA to vote. It's not even enough for a gun-owning friend of the NRA to vote. We have to get everybody who supports the Second Amendment out this time because it is truly all on the line, and they get that. It is so true. And, you know, there there were, speaking of on the line, there were lines everywhere. There sure were. And I wondered, I mean, the impact that's going to have on new members. Uh, You know, we've we've got new members of the board. We've got a lot of new members here. Every place I went to talk Uh, During the course of this annual meeting, uh, dozens and dozens of people would come up to me and say, this is my first annual meeting, this is my first first NRA meeting, this is my first convention, this is the first show I've gone to, uh, and I just want you to know that I'm there. I agree with you. We're ready to fight. So I think uh, this is going to be one uh, one heck of a year, uh, and while we face some tremendous challenges, you know, when you think about it, We've overcome those challenges in the past. Uh, when we've been threatened, our members and friends of the Second Amendment have always been equal to whatever the threat is. And I think we're equal to the threat this time. I think we can make a difference. Uh, and uh, when we get together next year, we're going to be celebrating. Uh, not the f- We're not going to be gathering in fear of what might happen. We're going to be gathering to celebrate what we've done. Yes, and NRA members as you know, are known to make a difference. All you got to do is ask Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly right. And, and we're going to do that this time with greater technology. It's going to cost more money because the world has changed, uh, and everything's more costly than it was in 2000. But we cost the, the, uh, the, the Gore candidacy five states and the presidency in 2000, uh, and I think that we'll do the same thing to the Obama candidacy this time if, we all get out and do what we know we have to do. So true. And there was a woman I was interviewing there, and she was there with her husband, and she was there for one reason. She said, I came because I wanted to buy a firearm for personal protection. And she looked right at me, and she said, you know what? I know if the NRA wasn't here, I wouldn't even have that choice. That's exactly right. And, and you know, I get together, Jenny, as I travel the country with all the, the different hunting groups, the different, uh, you know, the turkey people and the quail people and the and the rough grouse people and all in the ducks hunters and the rest and they all understand now uh that the predicate for everything they do is what we do Mm -hmm. that if we don't do what we do they don't get to do what they do so i think that really for the first time everybody knows that the boat they're in uh is a boat that's occupied by every everybody that's involved in the shooting sports uh and that is one heck of a community, and I think we're going to be able to mobilize that community this year, particularly in targeted states, and that that's going to make a huge difference. And, and really, that is what Wayne told the crowd. He said, you know what, we got to join forces because 
if we don't make some changes, America as we know it will be a thing of the past. That's exactly right. I mean, the the uh, you know it was interesting, Jenny. We had uh, here as our guest uh, the uh, the the number two man in the Russian Senate. Uh, who is, in fact, a life uh, member of the NRA. And uh, he's interested in setting up a gun rights group in Russia. And early last week, uh, in Russia's Channel One, which would be their CBS, their biggest, uh, their biggest broadcast network, featured a debate on the question of whether individuals in Russia should have the right to keep and bear arms. And a million people voted uh, wow. the way we vote in, you know, uh, these various shows that we have in this country, a million people voted, and it was 76-24 mm-hmm. in favor of that. And the argument was, and this is something that we need to think about, the argument was, you know, the people of the United States are privileged. They can own firearms. Uh, the people of some of the countries that used to be under the Soviet, under Soviet domination, like Latvia and Estonia, they can own firearms. And then the debater said, why are Russians second-class people? Mm-hmm. And the irony is that all of that these countries are sort of moving in our direction while we've got leadership that wants to move in the direction that they've left. Hey, we got to send that message to the U.N. too, because, you know, all you have to do is go to people in England. They look right at you and say, hey, don't do what we did, and we only wish we had an NRA. That's right. You know, Jenny, while we focused, uh, obviously, in most of the meetings on the election, because that is the number one thing we have to worry about, uh, during the, the run-up to the, to the annual meeting, we had our committee meetings for the board. And our international affairs subcommittee is chaired by Ambassador John Bolton. And uh, John, in addressing the committee this time, said, this year, they're not kidding. Yep. This year, uh, it's all hands on deck in terms of the U.N., because this is when we have to stop. And he said, one of two things might happen. They're going to want to move their treaty along so they're ready uh, to push it through immediately if President Obama is reelected, because they know that his effectiveness will wane as any second term president does as the presidency goes on, or to ram it through right after the new president is elected and before he's organized, which is what they tried to do, as you'll recall, when Bush was elected. Yep, and that's what Bolton did. He drew the line and, in the sand. And yep. Bolton stopped it. Yep. But uh, when a new president's elected, there's the kind of chaos and lack of uh, planning and knowing what's going on that allows that kind of thing to happen. So so Ambassador Bolton said, this time you have to be there and you have to stop it. And even though we've got all this other stuff going on, even though we're all in on the election, uh, Chris Cox's response from Isla is, we will be there and we will take the time to do that. Yeah. So I think we're going to be, we're prepared, uh, you know, we're 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 ready to deal with our critics and our enemies uh, domestically and internationally. And I think that uh, if we work it right, it's all going to work out. Yep, and you, has always made, you have always made clear our work is never done. But the turnout speaks to really who the grassroots power and the support of the NRA Absolutely. is. Absolutely. The NRA is more popular today in terms of favorability. I used to like to say, well, it's more... Uh, more positively regarded in either of the major parties, but that's such a slow track, I stopped saying it. Uh, but the uh, the NRA is very favorably regarded, very favorably looked on by the general population, uh, gun owners and Second Amendment supporters, and those who've never even thought of owning a gun or haven't given much thought uh, to any of these questions in the past have begun to get it.